Ooh. Oh, wow. What a lovely nap I had. <sighs> lovely. I wonder what I'm going to do today. Ah, I think I might check the YouTube comments today, see what my lovely viewers are talking about. Where's your Doc 2 DVD collection video? You promised a DVD collection I've months been patiently ago. awaiting your DVD collection It's been two years since your last Where's your DVD video? Man's been waiting for your channel was never replied to my I think you should make a new Doc 2 DVD collection video. Well, I'd, I'd better make a Doc 2 DVD collection then, mightn't I? Yep, you did read the title correctly. I am finally doing my Doctor Who DVD collection for 2022. Um, and yes, I have also now completed the collection. I now own every single Doctor Who DVD that has been released by the BBC. It's all here, finally, for your viewing pleasure. I'm going to be showing off all of my DVD collection, starting with Hartnell, Troughton, Pertwee, Baker, Davidson, Baker, uh, McCoy, McGann briefly, and then obviously Eccleston, uh, then Tennant and Smith, Capaldi, and then ending with Jodie Whittaker. The only DVD I technically don't have in this collection is the DVD box set of Series 13 Flux, but I'm sure we'll be able to live without that DVD in this collection, let's be fair. But yeah, that's enough rambling. Uh, let's get into the Doctor Who DVD collection for 2022 at long last. Let's get into it. And of course, starting off this collection, we all know the drill by now. It is An Unearthly Child, the first Doc 2 story, you know, ever. Part 1 is obviously stellar television, especially for the 60s. But parts 2, 3, and 4 of this serial, ugh, not so much. You know, not that good, to be honest. Um, but part 1 is obviously brilliant television. So, yeah, that more than makes up for it, if you ask me, for the start of Doctor Who, as it were. The Daleks, um, I've grown to love it over the years. It's a bit bloated. Uh, there's a lot of filler in this in this serial, but it's still enjoyable for the most part. Edge of Destruction, a short little adventure, self-contained in the TARDIS. What could go wrong with that? I enjoy it. Keys of Marinus, a mini key to time. I think it's aight, you know. The Aztecs, one of the best historical stories in all of Doctor Who. I, I love the Aztecs to pieces, to be honest. Brilliant. I'm obviously not going to talk about every single DVD that we see here in depth. I'm just going to discuss the ones that I think are more notable, in, in my opinion. So, uh, yeah. With that in mind, the Sensorites. It's aight, you know, don't love it, don't hate it, kind of thing. Reign of Terror. Planet of Giants. It's decent, you know. Dark Invasion of Earth. I have a huge nostalgia factor attached to this one. Just the Dalek, you know, the iconic moment when the Dalek just literally just comes out of the comes out of the Thames. It's such an iconic scene in British television, let alone for Doctor Who. And I remember watching this as a kid, and that actually spooking me a little bit, to be honest. Um, uh, but yeah, the rescue. People say that it's short but sweet. I think it's still dreadful. This thing just drags, even though it's a two-parter. I don't like this one. Um, but yeah, the Romans, um, it's fun. I enjoy it, it's a fun little run around to be honest. Um, it, as, as it comes from a historical story, it's a bit silly in my opinion. It doesn't really represent the uh, the Roman sort of era of humanity as, as well as as, uh, as I'd hoped to be honest. But you know, it's still fun to watch I suppose, yeah. Then we have the web planet, which has still got its <laughs> CEX sticker on it. Um, yeah, it's okay. Uh, the Zabi are an interesting uh, little monster. Um, but it's not the best story, to be honest. I think it's definitely held back by the dreadful, uh, sort of, like, production quality that the story had at the time. Even for, like, 60s television, it was kind of stinky. Um, but yeah, that's it. Hot take here. The Space Museum is my second favourite Hartnell story, just, just behind uh, a story that we'll get to uh, soon. Uh, the Space, Space Museum is actually amazing. I, I love this story so much, hence the hence me getting it signed. Um, yeah, 
I think it's actually amazing. I, 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 I don't know what to tell you. The, the setting is really cool. The companions are actually on top form. They're actually utilised quite well in this story and there isn't really too much filler. It's a brilliant four-parter as well. It really doesn't drag. Like I said, I love the setting. The Doctor is pretty cool in this. The, in, the stakes of the story are kind of engaging as well. I, I really like this one. I, I don't know what to tell you. I really enjoy it. The Chase. Um... Yeah, much like the Romans, it's not one you want to take seriously, um, though it is enjoyable, it's a fun run around, which is the way that I can describe the story, definitely. Doesn't mean it's bad though, I, I do enjoy it, to be honest, for what it is. It does drag a tiny bit in the middle though, um, but it's alright, you know, I, I think it's fun, all the same, it's a fun story. Then we have the Time Meddler. Uh, ooh, I can't. I couldn't tell you what happened in this one, to be honest. I don't really remember all that much, um, considering it's sort of the meddling monk in it and that. Um, yeah, I don't really remember what happens in this one. Um, I remember thinking it, it was all right, but a bit forgettable is the best is the best way to describe this one, I think. Galaxy Four. I haven't watched it yet. I watched the uh, the 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 recon, the tele snap reconstruction that came on disc two of the Aztecs, and I enjoyed Galaxy Four on that. But uh, I haven't seen it uh, in its animated form yet. I just haven't really got around to it yet. Um, plus, it's a more recent addition to my collection, so I haven't really had the time to give it a try. Um, but yeah, um, I, I have high hopes for it though, because like I say, I remember enjoying the recon in the disc two of the Aztecs. So I'm hoping that I'll enjoy it here even more. And we have the arc, not much to say about it really. The gunfighters, underrated. The soundtrack for it is excellent. The setting is really, really cool if you ask me. It's just a solid story all around. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it a lot to be honest. The gunfighters is underrated in my opinion. The war machines, um, I used to have a very controversial take on this where I thought that this wasn't that good of a story, but I've warmed it up to it over the years. I think it's okay. I'm not the biggest fan of Dodo as a companion, but that isn't a uh, a, a byproduct of, of this story being bad. It's just kind of an uh, like like a accessory for it, I guess. Um, I think it's decent though. It doesn't it doesn't have as much dragging in the middle as I remember it having. I remember being very bored and have, have, having too much filler in it, but nowadays I, I've I've warmed up to it. I think it's I think it's at least decent. I'd give it like if it was like a one to ten uh, scale rating and ten being like excellent. I'd probably give it a six out of ten, which means like just slightly above average. So I, it's I, you know, it's harmless. It's a harmless piece of television. And now we have my favourite uh, Hartnell story, the Tenth Planet. I love the Tenth Planet so much. Um, the the Cybermen in this are so fucking cool. The design I will not stop praising till the end of my days. The human hands. The, the the foil casings and then the big boxes on their chests. It's just really, really cool stuff. The story as well is really good. The only thing that I think is slightly dampens it a bit is the fact that the Doctor is absent through part three, I think. And then most of part four until he walks out and uh, and and turns into Troughton. Um, but considering it's the first regeneration story, I think it is not a bad one you know, to start off the regeneration saga with. I definitely think if if any story was to be, you know, William Hartnell Swan Song, Swan 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 Swan, Swan fuck, I can't fucking speak Swan Song, then this is probably the best one. I just wish it had more Hartnell in it for its final story, if that makes sense. That's my only uh, complaint with it. Apart from that, excellent, excellent stuff. Next, we have something that's kind of obsolete now, but we have the uh, Lost in Time box set. Um, yeah, I mean, there's only a few things on here that haven't been adapted to t to a, 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 a uh, adaptation DVD since. So the Crusade, we haven't had a Crusade. That's one story I want to be animated. The fucking Crusaders. I want the Crusaders so badly. I read the novel a few years back and fucking adored it. I love the Crusaders and it needs to be animated immediately. Obviously, the episodes of Dalek's Master Plan are still on here to watch. Toy Maker episode four is on here as well. Underwater Menace and Moon Base and Faceless Ones and now Evil of the Daleks are all obsolete. We don't need to watch those on, on this box set anymore because we've got them animated now. Same with Enemy of the World and Web of Fear. We haven't seen a Wheel in Space adaptation though I have still got high hopes that we will soon because it is a Cyberman story and these uh, and the BBC does like to favor uh, you know animating you know 
60 stories that uh, have got Daleks and Cybermen in it more than anything else. So I've got high hopes for Wheel in Space, hopefully soon. But as for the Crusaders, uh, oh, it's, a, it's a vain hope, <laughs> that's for sure. But uh, hopefully one day we'll get the Crusaders. But no, Lost in Time box set. Um, not too much point for this box set to exist anymore, but it's still fun because there are a few bits and bobs in here that are unique to this set and only this set, so there you go. Next, Power of the Daleks, um, signed by Anakin Wills. Uh, yeah, I sung its praises over the years, and nowadays it's just good. It's just, it's just good. It's nothing more than good. Nowadays, I wouldn't really put it higher than maybe a seven or an eight out of ten. I used to hold it up to the high regards as I would rate like. Genesis of the Daleks and Remembrance of the Daleks and Ark in Space and things like that. But nowadays, yeah, it's good. It's good. There's definitely nothing wrong with it. I think the animation does help, and the fact that I could watch it in color, also black and white, and also uh, tele snaps. This DVD case is just excellent because it has all these different options. You can watch the animation in color, in black and white, or just watch the tele snap version because that's also available here. This is an excellent DVD to buy. Whether or not you adore this story or just like it, it is a worth your money and yeah. Um, as for the episode itself, it's decent, it's good. I enjoy it still, but it's gone slightly down in my rankings, that's for sure. But yeah, next we have, oh, this fucking thing again. Um, yeah, those of you that have kept up to date with this channel knows my hatred for this uh, episode, hence the battered nature of its DVD case. I don't even know if I still hate this story. I haven't seen it in, I think, fucking three or four years now. Um, but I have to keep up with my tradition. This has to go. So let's, uh, let's send it on its way, shall we, people? Bye, have a good time. Meanwhile... Underwater Menace. Tank must be doing another Doctor Who collection again. Mm. Alright, and now that's out of the way, let's move on to a much better story. We have The Moon Base, one of my favourite uh, Patrick Troughton stories. Um, I'm not sure if it's my absolute favourite anymore, but it certainly was for a good few years. Um, I love this Cyberman design. Um, I also love the setting. I love the story. It's obviously signed by Fraser Hines just because I love this story that much. Um, even the animation parts of the story is excellent. I, I love all of it, to be honest. This is a 10 out of 10 story if I've ever seen one. Um, but yeah, that's the moon base. The Macro Terror, haven't watched it yet. It's, a, it's an animation that I've not too long ago bought, so I've yet to actually experience it. Same with the faceless ones. Same with Evil of the Daleks. But I am a bit annoyed when it came in the post, the casing had already come a bit damaged. It won't click together when it closes. That really did irritate me when I re when I received this one. So but I don't really have the money to go back and trade it in for another one, which is the most irritating part. But what can you do? I have the story now, so I'll, I'll watch it eventually. Tomb of the Cybermen. Uh, this one's signed by Deborah Watling. Um, I love this one as well. It's another 10 out of 10 story, if you ask me. The setting is so sick. The side characters are all right, I guess. They're, they're, they're okay, I suppose. Yeah, it's a good story, to be honest. Um, but yeah, Ice Warriors, Enemy of the World, an absolute fucking gem of a story. This might be my favorite Troughton story nowadays. I think it's just an excellent one. I definitely think this is a gold standard. This is really does show off Patrick Troughton's amazing acting, to be honest. This just shows how talented of a man he is. We've been playing two characters, obviously. It is just a really cool story. Even though it's a six-parter, it's the fucking quickest six-episode Doctor Who story I've ever watched. It is just so good all the way through. Web of Fear. It's okay. I will not buy the re-released version with that animated missing episode because that is a we fucking waste of money if I've ever seen one. But yeah, his story's alright as well. Um, introduction to the Brigadier, so you know, you can't go wrong with that. It's not as good as Enemy of the World, but they both got released at the same time, which I remember being a brilliant time to be a Doc 2 fan, because that was obviously also the 50th year of the show or whatever, so yeah. It's an alright story, I don't mind it, it's decent. Fury from the Deep, I've not seen it yet. It's a new animation that I've not, you know, I bought not too long ago, so there you go. 
Dominators. Terrible. Absolutely fucking dreadful story. I do not like that one at all. Mind Robber. An Fucking excellent story. Much like uh, Enemy of the World, I really appreciate stories, especially from like the 60s era of Doctor Who, where they really experiment with the formula and try something different. And this story is literally that in a nutshell. There is so much experimentation. The acting is also really good. I think it's just a fucking brilliant story all the way through. And there were so many teething issues going on behind the scenes at the time. Like there was an entire episode where Jamie wasn't acted by Fraser Hines and somehow it works in the story. Oh God, sorry, not the tripod and excitement there. But yeah, Mind Robber is amazing. And anybody who tells you different is fucking lying to themselves. It is just so good. I love the Mind Robber. Invasion. Another excellent story. I think it's eight parts as well, and yet it doesn't drag at all. Is it eight parts? I'm gonna check. I haven't seen it in a long time. Yeah, eight parts. Bloody hell. Okay, yeah. Um, excellent story. I remember loving it all the way through. Um, Tobias Warren, I think that's the uh, villain's name there. Um, a brilliant villain. One of the best one-off villains that we've ever had in Doctor Who. I think it's just an excellent story. Excellent. The Cybermen are excellent. Everything about it's excellent. The Brigadier's back. It's just so fucking good. The Crotons, not as good. Seeds of Death, amazing. I love Seeds of Death. It is so fucking good. This, this episode made me fall in love with the Ice Warriors as a whole. What a good story. I love this one. Also, the Doctor gets attacked by Bubble Bath. Can't go wrong with that. Right. War Games. Um, this is the longest Doctor Who serial to ever be released just behind Dalek's Master Plan. A 10 episode story, so five hours of straight Doctor Who. And I never get bored watching it. And you know what's funny? I am pride myself of this. I've only watched this episode all the way through. I've never watched it, then stopped. Like I've never watched the first five parts, then left it a day, then watched the other five parts. I've always watched all 10 episodes of this in one sitting. Five, I've always done that, and I think I've watched this story, I think, ten times. I know, I, I should probably have been, you know, made completely fatigued of this story by now, but I'm really not. Even now, I have fond memories of watching this one. I think it's just excellent. As, uh, for, for Patrick Troughton as well, for his final story, it is so good. They really do, sl like, send him off on a high note, in my opinion. This story is just gold standard for Doctor Who, you know, it's just so excellent. Um, one of my favorites as well, War Games is so good. Speaking of one of my favorites, Spearhead from Space. This is another top, t this is a top 10 Doctor Who story for me, I think. Spearhead from Space is just fucking stellar. I love this one. Everything about this story is just brilliant. The Autons, the Brigadier, Liz Shaw is also great. Pertwee's first story. There's, there's nothing not to love about this one. I think it's just so excellent. It's so good. Anyway, Doctor and the Silurians. Um, now, don't hate me for this. Slightly overrated. Underrated doesn't mean that it's bad, though. I still enjoy it. I just think it could have been done to being trimming down to a five-parter or a four-parter rather than seven parts because it does drag in the middle. And the ending does come out of nowhere a tiny bit, but it's still good. I still love the ending. It slightly comes out of nowhere considering how much build-up there is for it, you know? Still brilliant, though. I love the set piece for it. John Pertwee is excellent, as always. It is a really good story, don't get me wrong. I still love it. Ambassadors of Death. Yeah, it's good. I like this one. It's the weakest of Series 7, but it's still good because Series 7 as a whole is really good. So, there you go. Speaking of Series 7 being amazing, Inferno. Probably my favourite John Pertwee story and my first episode that I think I watched of John Pertwee. Um... Yeah, it's absolutely fucking brilliant. I love Inferno. It's the sh it's a very, very... It zips by seven parts, three and a half hours. It's the shortest three and a half hours you'll ever experience in your life. It is just so fucking thrilling all the way through. This is a fucking S-tier Doc 2 episode. I really love this one. Nothing else to say, really. You just need to watch it. I don't want to spoil it because it's just that fucking good. But yeah, there you go. Terror of the Autons. I feel like in previous collection updates, I've been a bit harsh on this story, but nowadays I think it's decent. The first Joe Grant story, first the master story, you know, with, especially with Roger Delgado as well. Roger Delgado is my favorite master. He still is, he probably always will be at this point, to be honest. Kind of stuck in my ways with who my favorite master is. But you know, I can't help it, I love him. Autons are back, not as good as in Spare from Space, but still decent. I think it's still a really, really good story, to be honest. I think it is just 
kind of sat in the shadow of Spearhead from Space because Spearhead from Space is. Blah, 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 blah. I can't speak today. Spearhead from Space is the superior story out of the two of these, but I still think this is good though. Don't get me wrong, I still like Terror of the Autons. The Mind of Evil, signed by Katie Manning. Katie Manning was a joy to meet as well. I met her back in like 2015 now, I think, or 2016 maybe. Lovely human being to meet she was. This is a good story. I don't remember too much about it. I just remember the master being really good in this one and the castle that they were in was really, really cool as well. Um, yeah, I, I remember enjoying it. That's all I can really say, to be honest. Claws of Axos. I remember not enjoying this one, mostly because of how much hype was, was built up to this one because everyone told me that it was just a, a gold standard. It's like as good as Ark in Space is what people were saying to me and I'm like, really? That's high praise. Watched it, not as good really, not it's it's I, you know, it, it's fine. It's nothing brilliant, it, it's just there I guess. It's, it's okay, I don't hate it by any means, it's just all right I guess. Colony in Space. This one is underrated. This is a this is a Pertwee story I never hear anybody praising, and I don't know why. I think this one is quite solid. I enjoy the story behind it and the characters. I think it's just a really good story all around. I remember saying earlier this video that I was going to talk less about these episodes, but I seem to be talking more about these episodes as I get to the Pertwee era, which I adore. The Demons, I fucking love it. There's not much else to say, really. The Demons cool. Uh, obviously, it's signed as well. Uh, the Master is at his best here. I think this is Roger Delgado's best story. This is the best setting as well. It's just such a cool gothic story. It's brilliant. I love this one. One of my favorite Pertwees. Day of the Daleks, and it's there. Curse of Peladon, not as good as people say. Sea Devils, fucking brilliant. I love the Sea Devils so much. The scene where they, where they all, you know, walk out of the sea together to attack like unit or whatever is just such a good such an iconic shot for doctor who the mutants not as bad as people say but that doesn't mean it's a good story time monster call me crazy this one is underrated i liked this one a lot and i might have been pleasantly surprised by it because i was going in with low expectations when watching it because i'd heard only bad things so that might be why i enjoyed it because i wasn't expecting to but there you go now that we're done with the first row let's move on to row number two. Let's do it. All right, now that we're on the second row, first off to show, we have The Three Doctors. A brilliant story. I love this one. Uh, there's not really anything bad to say about this one. I just really enjoy it, you know? Yeah, not much else to say, really. But yeah, it's good. Carnival of Monsters. It's all right. Frontier in Space. Fucking amazing. Planet of the Daleks. Un um, overrated, I'd say. A bit overrated. The Green Death. Brilliant. I love this one. The Time Warrior, fucking amazing. This is my favorite John Pertwee story, probably. I, Everything that I love about the Pertwee era pre-packaged pre, pre, pre in this episode. Sontarans are fucking brilliant in this. Or Sontaran, singular, I should say. Liz Slade and is brilliant. Obviously, she signed it here as well. Brilliant story. Invasion of the Dinosaurs, an underrated story. I will pray, I will defend this story till my dying breath. The only thing that's shit about this story is the animatronic dinosaurs in this. Everything else about it, I enjoy. The story is brilliant. I, I just I just love it. I just love this story. I don't know what to tell you. I, is it me? Is there something wrong with me? I love Invasion of the Dinosaurs. But in, in Vegetable of the Dinosaurs? Yeah, that's the story name. Anyway, Death to the Daleks, amazing story. It helps that I've got nostalgia attached to this one because this is one of the first classic stories I ever watched growing up, so there you go. Monster of Peladon, severely underrated. I expected out of the Peladon stories to like curse more than monster. I love this story way more than, than, than Curse of Peladon. It also helps that much like Death to the Daleks, this is one of the first Doc 2 stories I watched when I was when I was younger. Yeah, that, that helps a bit, but I do Jeff Down I do definitely think that this story is, is actually brilliant and I love it. Planet of Spiders, another one of my first Doc 2 stories I ever watched growing up. Excellent. Another excellent one here. I a great exit for John Pertwee as well. A great great send-off for his doctor, I think this story is. Robot, an excellent story once again. All of series or that season I should say. Hold on. I should say though that season 12 of Doctor Who classic series, I'm very very partial to it. It's like my favourite run of Doctor Who like of all time. Robot, Ark in Space, Sontara, and Genesis, Revenge. Those five, these five stories back to back are excellent. And this one is a perfect start for Tom Baker's era as a whole. I think it's just so, so good. So good. Ark in Space, one of the first Doctor Who stories I ever watched. Great one to 
to, to you know to watch from a young age when you're first getting into the show. You know, no, nothing but praise for this one. Love it. Zontaran Experiment. Yeah, this one's obviously signed as well, just to show how much I love it. Nothing but but good things to say about this one as well. It's a lovely two-parter, lovely short but sweet story. One of my favourite Tom Baker stories as well. It's just so good. Genesis of the Daleks. Tom Baker signed this one, and um, yeah. Uh, was I ever going to get him to sign anything other than this one? This one was another one of my first classic stories I ever watched and I am so so thankful that this piece of television exists because it is it is stood the test of time. People still love this story when they talk about the best Doc 2 episodes. This one is still in the conversation and it fucking well should be because it is just excellent in every single way. I love it to pieces. Revenge of the Cybermen. This is the ugly duckling of season 12 of this run of Doctor Who. And I don't know why. People don't like this one. They like all the other series, uh, season 12 episodes, except for this one. People don't like Revenge of the Cybermen, and I don't understand why. It is just as good as the stuff that came before it in season 12, and is just as good as the excellent stuff that comes in season 13 afterwards. It is brilliant. I love Revenge of the Cybermen, but yeah. Terror of the Zygons, nothing to say about this one. It speaks for itself, really. It is a classic, and everyone knows it. It's really, really good. Planet of Evil, severely underrated. This one is talked about the least in season 13 of Classic Who, and it and it needs and it needs more credit. It is actually really, really good. Pyramids of Mars, excellent. Nothing to say about it except praise. I love Pyramids of Mars. Android Invasion, yep, yeah, it's good. Brain and Morbius, yep, yeah, it's good. <laughs> Seeds of Doom, yeah, it, it's good. <laughs> Mask of Mandragora, this is season 14 we're in now. It's all right. Mask of Mandragora is a bit of a weaker start to uh, a season of Tom Baker, but it's still good though. I still like Mask of Mandragora, which is not so much as the stuff that came before it, I guess. Hand of Fear, yeah, it's all right. I quite like it, you know, it, it's decent. It's a decent exit for, set for uh, Sarah Jane, to be honest, it's quite good. Deadly Assassin is fucking excellent. I love the Deadly Assassin to, to no end. I think this story is is the definitive Gallifreyan episode. This is the this is the best episode that's set on Gallifrey for Doctor Who, and I don't think anybody will, will argue with me on this one. But yeah, great master story, great Tom Baker story, great story all around. Face of Evil, an excellent start to Leela. The actual plot of it is decent as well. I went into it expecting not to like it as much as I did, but I was pleasantly surprised. It's good. I like this one. Robots of Death, another really, really good one. It, its praises have been sung by every other Doctor Who fan in the world, so I don't really feel like I need to fight in its corner. I feel like it, it can stand on its own. Everyone knows that it's good. Same with Talon to Wing Chiang. I think it's really good. I don't know why it's got the sticker for number one Doctor Who story ever, because that's the sticker that I think belongs on the Genesis of the Daleks DVD. I don't know what's doing on here. Great story all around. It's a great six-parter. It doesn't it doesn't drag at all, which is brilliant. Next we have one of my first Doctor Who stories I ever watched, Horror of Fang Rock. This story is everything that I love about Tom Baker and Leela as a, as a duo. I think this story is so good. Even with the root and sort of like special effects going around it look a bit iffy. Even despite that, the setting is so creepy, the story is creepy, everything about it is awesome. I love Fang Rock, it's such a good story. Image of Fendel, underrated. Invisible Enemy, The Sunmakers, ugh, nah, mm, don't like Sunmakers that much. Underworld, mm, mm, don't like Underworld either really. Invasion of Time, uh, very underrated. I love Invasion of Time. I don't know why people don't like this one. I, I've, I always have fun watching this one. It's like two stories in one because they like sort out a deal on Gallifrey and then suddenly the Sontarans show up like halfway through. I love that personally. It's great. It leads to a great cliffhanger as well. Then we have the six part key to time story. Oh, no, that's Pirate Planet. Rybos Operation, that's all right. Pirate Planet, crap. Stones of Blood, crap. Androids of Tara, a fucking brilliant story, an absolute gem in this season of Who. I think this story is just so, so good. I love I love Androids of Tara. Power of Crawl is decent, it's a bit underrated. Not much to say, really. Armageddon Factor. Don't know why it's a six-parter, it should have been a four-parter. It is. It drags on too much. Destiny of the Daleks, underrated as hell. I enjoy Destiny of the Daleks a lot. Romana 2 is also really, really good in this one. 
Lala Ward is great, so there you go. Speaking of Lala Ward being great, City of Death. This is Lala Ward and Tom Baker's best story together, probably. I think it being in France does add to add to its charm, I think. I think it's just a really, really good story overall. Yeah. Creature from the Pit. Um, this one's a bit stinky. I don't like Creature from the Pit that much. It doesn't help that, that this is the episode with the infamous scene where the Doctor literally sucks off a, a green glob monster. Yeah, not that great, is it? <laughs> Nightmare of Eden, another iffy story. Not that good. Horns of Nymon, also not very good. Don't like that one. Sharda, I've seen the uh, the other DVD version of this, but not this animated version, so I'll have to watch that and give you my verdict on it after that. The Leisure Hive, um, oof, nah, not very good, to be honest. Don't like the Leisure Hive all that much. Megloss, don't really like Megloss all that much either, to be honest. Not very good at all, to be honest. Full Circle, yeah, it's all right. Stair Decay, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Warriors of the Gate, not so good. Keeper Traken, fucking excellent. I love Keeper Traken, this is a gem. Especially for Jeffrey Beavers. I, oddly enough, though I do love this story, I wish that I got Jeffrey Beavers to sign my audio CD of Master from the monthly range of Big Finish. Though I do love this story and Jeffrey Beavers is great in this, I feel like his talent is shown better on audio dramas for Big Finish than this. But still good, nonetheless. I love it. It's good. It's real good. I love it. Logopolis. It's decent. It's nothing more than decent, to be honest. It, I would have liked a better swan song for the fourth Doctor than this, to be honest, to end off such a gargantuan era of, of Doctor Who being the Tom Baker era. But yeah, that's it for the second row. Let's move on to the third row. All right, moving on to the third row, we have, first of all, Castrovalva to kick off the uh, fifth Doctor's era. Um, so, yeah, it's an all right story. It's harmless. Um, for an intro for the, for the fifth Doctor, not all that good. He's asleep for most of the episode, which has always been a complaint I've had for it. But besides that, it's all right. You know, it's it's all right. There's not much to say about it, really. Just it's all right. Now we have Fall to Doomsday. It's OK. Kinder's quite good. I quite like Kinder. Same with The Visitation. I think this is quite a decent story as well. The Fire in London. It's quite a cool uh, backdrop for a Doctor Who story. Black Orchid is OK. Um, a bit of a throwaway story compared to like the rest, but it's it's still it's still decent. At least it's still it's still fun to watch. Earthshock, it, it, I, but, 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 start again. Earthshock, amazing. I love Earthshock. Uh, I wish that the DVD case didn't have the Cybermen on the front because it does really spoil their reveal at the end of episode one. But that is literally the only complaint about the story. Nothing within the story itself, just the marketing and packaging. <laughs> Everything else about this story is excellent. Time Flight, not as excellent. Don't like Time Flight whatsoever. Arc Infinity, it's uh, it's not that good really. I don't, I don't like Arc Infinity that much either. Snake Dance is just a worse version of Kinder. Not all that good, don't like Snake Dance. Mordred Undead is okay. Terminus is a bit crap to be honest. Enlightenment is okay, I like Enlightenment. To a certain degree, I don't, I don't love it to be honest, but I think I think it's okay, at least. I think it's decent. Next, we have The King's Demons. Um, this one is okay as well. I don't remember loving it all that much, but it's okay, I guess. Warriors of the Deep can just fuck right off. Don't like Warriors of the Deep whatsoever. That, that episode can go burn for all I care. The Awakening. I've heard people praise this story, and it's never made sense to me. When I watched it, it was just boring. And I think it's a two-parter as well, which doesn't help. What does it say here? Yep, it's a two-parter, and yeah, I found it boring. That's not a good sign. Anyway, The Five Doctors. Now, if you asked me a few years ago, I would have been an old uh, grumpy Krumpus, and I would have said that Five Doctors is a stinky episode. I have since wisened up and learnt to appreciate life more. In the grand scheme of things, The Five Doctors is not that bad. That's the verdict I came to of this story. I think it's quite good. It's fun at the very least. The fact we don't have Hartnell or Tom Baker during most of it, or all of it for Hartnell's uh, case. Um, the Five Doctors is okay. I've, I'm, I've, I've warmed up to it over the years. Frontios is great. Resurrection of the Daleks is probably my favorite Peter Davidson story. If, if it's not uh, worth shock, then it'll probably be this. Um, yeah, brilliant. 
Planet of Fire is okay, I guess. It could be could be better, it could be worse. And the case of Andrazani. It speaks for itself. I don't need to really discuss it that much. Everyone knows how good this story is. Now we have Colin Baker's era. Let's get into it. So, Twin Dilemma. Not off to a great start, are we, Colin Baker? Uh, no, don't like this story at all. Twin Dilemma is trash. I Probably one of the worst stories in, in Classic Who. Uh, yeah, not very good at all. Attack of the Cybermen, there we go. Now we're getting some good stories. Attack of the Cybermen is solid. I enjoy Attack of the Cybermen a good amount, to be honest. I think this is a really solid one. I think Colin Maker does carry this one a bit, but the Cybermen are at least decent in this one, so yeah. Vengeance on Varos, hey, I like Vengeance on Varos a hell of a lot, hence why I got Colin Baker to sign it. Yeah, a great story. I love Vengeance on Varos. It is just, the setting for it is cool. The premise is amazing. It's just a great story all around. Let's just ignore the fact that the Doctor killed two people via an acid bath. That's a bit of a dark moment, isn't it? But besides that, great story. Love Vengeance on Varos. Mark of the Rani is okay. That's all I can really say about it, is that it's okay. It's not great, it's not terrible. It's just there. Same with the two Doctors. It's just there. <laughs> Not much to love, not much to hate. It's just kind of a very bare bones story. Not too much to enjoy besides the fact that we've got Sixth Doctor and the Second Doctor together. That's really it. Oh, and plus Jamie. Sorry, I can't forget Jamie. It's just that, it's just that. It's just the fact that you've got returning characters coming back into the story that kind of carries this one. It's not too fun of a story besides that, to be honest. But what can you do? It's okay. Time Lash. Don't want to talk about that one. That one is just Shit, I hate Time Lash. Revelation of the Daleks is brilliant. I love I read that. Re Re Revelation of the Daleks is a good story. Um, I have some nostalgia attached to this one as well, so that might be why I like it. But I do think it's quite a good story. I think it's quite decent. Davros is quite good considering, you know, what state he's in during most of this story. I think it's good. I think it's quite a good story. I, I enjoy it a good amount. There you go. Now on to Trial of a Time Lord. We have Mysterious Planet. Mm, it's okay. I quite like Trial of a Time Lord overall, so I feel like most of this series will be quite positive in my opinion. Mind Warp is okay. Terror of the Vervoids is brilliant. I love Terror of the Vervoids. And the Ultimate Foe is okay. I think I think it's quite a decent end to, uh, to Trial of a Time Lord. Not a great end to Colin Baker's era though. I feel like he could have got a better send off than just bonking his head on, on the console in the next story and just having it be done like that. But yeah. Next we have Sylvester McCoy. Yay, my favorite doctor, finally. So, first we have Time and the Rani. Underrated, I love Time and the Rani. People like to, like to bash me and say that, oh, you're just blinded by your love for Sylvester McCoy. And you'd be right, my good sir. But nonetheless, I like Time and the Rani and no one can change that for me. Paradise Towers. Probably the weakest in series 24, to be honest. And people say this is like the best one in series 24. I think it's kind of the weakest, in my opinion. I still love it, I still enjoy it, but it's just not as good, I guess, I don't know. Delta and the Bannerman, probably, <laughs> hear this, probably my favorite <laughs> in series 24, not even joking. It is just a really fun story to me. I don't know why I like it so much, but I just do, I can't help it. Delta and the Bannerman is fun. I don't know, yeah. Dragonfire. Oh, no, another good one. I like Dragonfire. Introduction to Ace. It's just a fun story all, all around. And the literal cliffhanger is fun to watch as well. It's just a just a good story all around. Now we have Remembrance of the Daleks. Eh, it's okay. <laughs> Obviously, I'm joking. This is my favourite Doc 2 story in the history of television. My favourite piece of media ever. This is the best piece of writing I've ever experienced. I love Remembrance of the Daleks, hence why I got it signed by my favourite Doctor and my favourite companion. There's the Doctor's signature, there's the companion's signature. Sophie Aldred, Sylv. They both signed this for me, and this is the original DVD, which doesn't even play anymore because I've fucking put it in my DVD player so many times, and yet I still own it because I love the stories that much. This is, this is also the first classic Doc 2 DVD that I ever bought as well, which just has added emotional value and sentimental nature to this, to my, you know, partial partialness to this, this story as a whole. It's just so, so good. I could talk about the story for years and I would never get bored of it. Anyway, there we go. Remembrance of the Daleks, fucking beautiful story. I love Remembrance, so good. Next we have Happiness Patrol. 
the Candyman is funny. There's not else to say really besides that. It's just a funny story. It's fun to watch. It's probably the weakest story in Sylvester McCoy's era for me. Doesn't make it doesn't mean it's bad though. Just my least favourite of his era. Next, Silver Nemesis. I like this story a lot more than other people do for some reason. Um, I think it's really, really good. Cybermen are pretty cool. This is my favourite Cyberman design, just behind the Mondasian Cybermen. So there you go, take that as you will. Great show in the galaxy, yeah it's good. Battlefield, uh, you know, reintroduction of Brigadier briefly. I like this one as well. Ghostlight is also fun, I enjoy this one a lot more than other people as well. <laughs> Curse of Fenric is fucking amazing. My second favorite uh, Celeste McCoy story. And then my third favorite Celeste McCoy story, Survival. A brilliant uh, send off for the classic series. I recently did a review of this of this episode and I came to the conclusion that I fucking adore this story to no end. I used to like it, now I love it. There you go, survival. And much like the end of me talking about survival is now the end of me talking about the classic series. But briefly, let's quickly show off More Than 30 Years in the TARDIS documentary, which I did a review for in 2018 and that review apparently got noticed by the person who made this documentary, Kevin John Davis. I think that's the guy who made it, wouldn't it? Yep, Kevin Davis made this and he he found my review on my channel, watched it and commented on it, which is a lovely little fun fact that I like to point out to people about this. But yeah, it's a fun documentary. Not much to say really besides that. TV movie. Um, the first piece of Doctor Who media that I ever experienced was the movie. So yeah, I like it. I think it's good. I have, I have been a bit harsh on it in the past and saying it's a bit shit. Now I think it's quite fun. I think it's quite a fun story. It's very, very different from anything that came before or anything that comes after it. So, but it, it's it's a nice pe it's a nice little time capsule for Doctor Who, you know, for the 90s. Um, but yeah, now we move on to the new series. Here we are, onto the new series. Um, I won't be talking about each episode of the new series in depth because we will be here for for twice the length of, that the video is already at right now. So we'll just go through and go series one, volume one. Volume 2, Volume 3, Volume 4. I like Series 1 of New Who a lot. It's probably my favourite New Who series. Moving on to Series 2, Volume 1, Volume 2, one of my favourite Doctor Who items I own, which is signed by John Leeson, who plays K9. Obviously features three of my favourite New Who stories, that being Tooth and Claw, School Reunion, Go in the Fireplace. Great, great disc, great episodes. Series 2, Volume 3, with great Sideman two-parter in there. Now, move on to the fourth and final row for the rest of the new series. Let's do it. All right, now on to the final row with series two, volume four, then series two, volume five. Now, I don't really love series two that much of the new series. I think it's the weakest of the RTD era, but it still has some gems in there. Like I say, like School Reunion, Girl in the Fireplace, uh, Rise of the Cybermen. Also, uh, Satan Pit, Impossible Planet, two-parter is pretty good as well. Just there are some, also some, a lot of stinkers in uh, series two that I'm not the biggest fan of, like New Earth and uh, Fear Her. Um, but yeah, now moving on to series three, we have The Runaway Bride. Then we have volume one, series three. Series three, volume two, which is a great disc because it has the Dalek two-parter plus 42. Then we have series two, volume three, which is a standout, of course, because it has Human Nature, two-parter, plus Blink, brilliant. And then this amazing three-parter of the master, John Sim, Utopia, Sound of Drums, Lost of the Time Lords. Brilliant, Series 3, Volume 4 is a brilliant disc. Now, moving on to uh, Voyage of the Damned, then Series 4, Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3, and then Volume 4. This is another amazing disc, because it has Turn Left, plus the Stolen Earth Journey's End two-parter, because that is obviously stellar television. Um, but yeah, excellent stuff. Right, now moving on to the Series 4 specials. We have the Christmas special, The Next Doctor, Planet of the Dead, The Waters of Mars, which is one of my favorite Doctor Who stories ever, and then The End of Time, which is a bit overrated, but that doesn't mean it's bad. Just overrated. But yeah, and uh, End of Time is also quite decent. But yeah, now we move on to Matt Smith's era with Series 5. Let's do it. So, Volume 1, Series 5, Volume 2, Volume 3, 
and Volume 4. Now, I quite like Series 5 of Doctor Who. I don't love it as much as some people do, but I do definitely appreciate some of the standout episodes in there. Eleventh Hour happens to be one of my favourite Doctor Who stories ever. Um, Amy's Choice is amazing. Uh, I do love the Angels do parter near the start of the era. I do like Beast Below as well. Uh, the Pandora could open two parter is really good. It's just a very solid season. That's all I really have to say, to be honest. But now, moving on to Series 6 with Christmas Carol. Then, uh, Series 6, Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3, Volume 4, and then Doctor Widow and the Wardrobe. Not as good of a series, let's be fair. Series 6 is kind of a stinker. Um, just not the biggest fan of it. I do love the God Complex. The God Complex is a great episode in there. I do love uh, The Impossible Astronaut, that's a really, really good episode. I also love The Doctor's Wife and The Girl Who Waited, those are some excellent stories as well. Um, I also don't mind Night Terrors, I think that's a quite a decent one as well. But um, overall it is a weaker season for Doctor Who, um, that's for sure. Now, Series 7! Series 7 Volume 1, a Town Called Mercy is in this disc and I fucking love A Town Called Mercy. It is an amazing episode. I cannot praise that episode enough. It's one of my favorites. Then we have Series series 7, uh, Volume 2, which is decent. It only has two episodes in it, though, which is a shame. But uh, Power Free is okay, and Angels Take Manhattan is also okay. Nothing else to note, really. Then, uh, yeah, then we have uh, Volume 3, which has a Christmas special wedged in there at the start. The Snowmen is uh, it's okay. Bells of St. John is uh, okay. Rings of Akaten, amazing. But yeah. And then Volume 4, which has the most fucking episodes in a single disc of New Who, at least up to this point. It has six episodes, seven episodes. Cold War, Hyde, Journey Center of the Tardis, Crimson Horror, Nightmare in Silver, Name of the Doctor, and uh, yeah, that's it. Actually, that is only six episodes, isn't it? Uh, very hit or miss, Series 7 is. A lot of, a lot of uh, hits, but a lot of misses. Um, some good ones and some equally bad ones. Um, my standouts for Series 7B, like I said, are Rings of Akaten, and then Cold War I do like a decent amount, and then Hyde is also okay, but it does kind of ta uh, teeter off a bit towards the end when it becomes this whole love conquers all type of story, which is a bit fluffy and all that, but yeah, I don't know. Then we have Day of the Doctor, which in previous years I've bashed a bit and I've said it's overrated but now I'm like yeah it's quite good I, I don't mind Day of the Doctor for what it is um, it's not really a celebration of the 50 years of Doctor it's more like a celebration of the last like 10 years of the new series if that makes sense but it's still a good episode then Time of the Doctor an underrated episode um, I love Time of the Doctor a lot more than anyone else does for some reason then we have Series 8, there's a big box set thing here. My standouts for Series 8 are as follows. Deep Breath I love, Listen is also amazing, The Caretaker I really enjoy, for, and not many other people agree with me with that one. Mummy on the Orient Express and Flatline are also brilliant, and then the Cyberman two-parter at the end is kind of all right, it's decent. Um, but yeah, now we have Last Christmas. Um, an underrated Christmas special. It's probably Moffat's best Christmas special. I really, really like it nowadays. I think it's a really, really good episode. I'm um, not much else to say about it, really, besides it's just a really, really, really good one. Now we have Series 9 of New Who with Series 9 Part 1, and then Series 9 Part 2. My favourite episodes in Series 9 are Under the Lake Before the Flood two-parter. That two-parter is amazing. The Zygon two-parter is also quite decent. And then Heaven Sent. Besides that, Series 9 is kind of a stinker of a season, to be honest, of Doctor Who. Husbands of River Song, underrated. Return of Doctor Mysterio, absolute fucking garbage. I hate Doctor Mysterio. It is such a shit episode, and I I think the show would be better off without it. <laughs> there are not many episodes I say, yeah, I talk about in that way, but this is Doctor Mysterio is just that trash. I hate that. I hate Doctor Mysterio. Now we have Series 10. Series 10 part 1, and Series 10 part 2. Now, my favourite episodes in Series 10 are as follows. Knock Knock, Oxygen, Empress of Mars, and then the two-parter to end off Series 10, which is, uh, well, enough time, Doctor Falls. No, I do actually quite like Smile as well. Smile is quite an underrated episode that people don't really talk about, but that's quite a, that's quite a, a nice one in Series 10, I won't lie. 
Series 10 does have a few good ones. And then we have this abomination. Twice upon a time. I do not like Twice Upon a Time at all. And I wish it didn't exist as an episode. It is not good. Don't like Twice Upon a Time at all. I, no, don't like it. <laughs> Get out of there. Anyway, now we move on to Jodie's era with Series 11. Um, now, though I have warmed up to Jodie as a Doctor, um, I do still think that Series 11 is an absolute L for Doctor Who. I think that Series 11 was the worst series of Doctor Who that we've had of the new series. Just no, like, excellent episodes to come out of it. The only ones that I even like slightly from this uh, series run is Rosa, Demons of Punjab and The Witch Finders. There is nothing else in this series 11 that I would go back to and watch again. Everything else is middling to shit, like from like a five, five out of 10 to below. That's how much I don't like series 11. I just think there's just a weak run of episodes. Don't like it. This on the other hand is a standout episode. Resolution is amazing and um, one of my favorite episodes of the new series, series even now, I love it to pieces. It is just such a creative new take on the Daleks for the new series and I really, really, really like this one. But yeah, that's Resolution. Now on to series 12, the most controversial season of Doctor Who of all time probably. Um, now as a season, it's okay. There are more stronger episodes on this one than Series 11 could even dream of having. But the difference is, is it's got the highest of highs, but also the lowest of lows of Jodie's era, in my opinion, at least so far. I don't have Flux on DVD, but I've seen it and I might discuss it real quick before I close off this video. Uh, series 12, um, the good episodes, let's go through them. I really, really like Spyfall. I also quite like Nikola Tesla's Night of Terror. I thought that one was quite a, quite a good one. Fugitive of the Jadoon is quite good as well. I also love Haunting of Villa Diodati. That is a superb episode. And Ascension of the Cybermen would be my favourite episode of Jodie's era if it wasn't for the episode preceding it, The Timeless Children, which seems to plague everything, you know, within the Jodie era. <laughs> the Timeless Children, that being. Um... But yeah, series 12 has some really good episodes, but also some really crap ones as well. So, you know, what can you do? At least it gave us some really, really good ones this time, whereas series 11 just gave us a lot of meh episodes from meh to shit. So, there you go. Now, the last thing to show off is another meh episode. Res uh, resolution? Revolution of the Daleks. I don't like this one. Um, people like this one for some reason, and I don't understand why. It is just is just wank. It is just the Daleks being fodder for a fucking 15 minute section. It, it's just not good. I, I don't like this episode that much, to be honest. The hype that, that was built up for this one wasn't worth it either. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's my DVD collection. Uh, my thoughts on Doctor Who Flux, um, since that's out now. Flux is much like series 12. It has the best of Jodie's era in it, but also the worst of Jodie's era in it. That's my thoughts on Doc 2 Flux as of right now. But I did really, really enjoy Eve of the Daleks. And as of recording this, I've got, um, I think two days until uh, uh, Legend of the Sea Devils comes out and I have high hopes that it's good. This is the first Sea Devil story we've had since fucking Warriors of the Deep. So I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that it'll be good, but it could, it could go either way, to be honest. So hopefully it's good. Who knows? Maybe I'll do a review in space of all of Doctor Who Series 13 when it's all finished with uh, Jodie's final story and that. Maybe I'll review Flux along with either the Daleks, Legend of the Sea Devils, and then whatever the final story will end up being called. But yeah, that's it from me. That's the DVD collection. So there you go. And just like that, the DVD collection is over and I've shown off every single Doctor Who DVD that I own, which is all of them now, besides um, Doctor Who Flux DVD and then the future Doctor Who 60s missing story animations that the BBC end up doing in the coming years. So until all of those 60s animations, like reconstructions come out, this will be the final DVD collection in, until I can purchase all of them and can have the complete set. So yeah, until that day, this is the final DVD collection. So I very much hope you enjoyed 
you know, watching these DVD collection videos over the years. It's been an absolute journey for me. I made my first DVD collection video in 2016. I bought my first Doc 2 DVD in 2007, which was Remembrance of the Daleks. What a great episode to, to kick off my collection with. And over the years, it's just grown more and more and more. Um, so I am very, very thankful for you guys sticking around all this time to watch this collection grow until its completion. So that's it, really. That's all I have to say, to be honest. Though I love this story a lot, I will put it back now. Wait, what's that noise? Is that a letterbox? I'll, I'll go, I'll go have a look. Who the fuck bothered to post this back to me? Is this some kind of sick joke? the fuck am I going to do with you then, eh? That'll do it for this Doc 2 DVD collection video. Hope you enjoyed.